Now let's just blow through a couple of quick verses just to really solidify that salvation is not by works, it's by faith. And some people will say to you, well, you know, salvation by faith and not by works, that's just something that Paul taught. That's just something that Paul writes in his epistles. But that's not something that the apostles believed. That, that's the 12 apostles, they believed in, in you know, keeping the commandments and salvation by works. Well, let's look at the Gospel of John, written by the Apostle John, you know, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And this is Jesus himself speaking in John chapter 3 reading from verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Jesus talking about himself. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So it's not whosoever is good enough, or whosoever lives a good life, or whosoever joins the, church, joins the church or is baptized, it's whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. So there's the salvation by believing on Jesus Christ. But look at this. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why are you condemned? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So very clear there that Jesus is teaching that salvation comes by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only reason why you're condemned is because you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. Not because you haven't done works or you're not living a good life or you haven't committed your life to Jesus uh, or anything like that. Let's look at a couple of other verses. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, so there's that testimony, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You know, a lot of people believe that when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't get salvation at that very point. You get it, you know, when you die, you get it at some time in the future. But what do we see here in this verse? Verily I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Now is that past tense, future tense or present tense? It's present tense, isn't it? So that means the moment at which you believe, you have everlasting life. And we see the future tense here, and shall not come into condemnation. You will never go to hell, you'll never perish, but is passed from death unto life. So salvation is something that happens at the moment you believe. Now you've passed from death unto life. That's what's happened to you. And you shall not come into condemnation. You'll never lose that salvation once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because salvation is a one-way street. Once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you receive everlasting life. You cannot lose it. So you get it at the very moment that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not something that you get later on. A lot of Pentecostals will believe this teaching that you get eternal life later on and that's why they believe that you can walk away from salvation you can believe now but maybe you won't believe and you'll walk away from the faith and then you won't get that eternal life later on no because the moment you put your faith on jesus christ is the moment that you have everlasting life and that you're saved john six forty seven, very clear verily 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 means truthfully truly verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me hath everlasting life again present tense when you believe on the lord jesus christ at that moment you believe you have everlasting life john 11 verse 25 jesus saith jesus said unto her i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live. So what is he talking about there? The fact that you're dead physically, you've left your body, you'll be alive in heaven. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And that's really the question of salvation, isn't it? The question of salvation is, do you believe the record that God has given of his son, that he has died for your sins and that he's risen again? And the last one we'll turn to here. 
1 John 5, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So it's not that he will be born of God. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. So there's some verses written by the Apostle John through inspiration of the Holy Ghost that salvation is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's look at some verses now which show us that it's by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's by faith, and it's not of works. Uh, Romans 3, verse 20. It says here, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And then in verse uh, 28 here, Therefore we conclude, we come to the conclusion that a man is justified by faith, without the deeds of the law. So again, we saw that in Romans 4, didn't we? To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Uh, Galatians 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Uh, let's go to Philippians. Philippians 3. I know you guys are very familiar with this point, but let's just uh, drum at home for this sermon. Uh, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. So this is Paul saying, if you're going to trust in your works, if you're going to trust in the flesh, I have even more that I can trust in than, than most people. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But look at this. But what things were gained to me, in terms of in the flesh, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. Remember that works through the law, which is of the law, but that which is through, through the faith of Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So very clear there that um, salvation is by faith and not by the works of the law. Titus 3. Verse 4. But after that the kindness and love of God our Saviour toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Saviour. So look at the direction of salvation. Is anything going in the direction of God besides our faith? No. Everything's coming in the direction of God to us because salvation is something that you receive by grace, not something that you work for, that you have to give something to God in order to receive which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Saviour, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And the last one we'll turn to on this topic, just showing that it's by faith and not by works. Romans 10, brethren, this is Paul talking about the nation of Israel. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is, they, is that they might be saved. So he wants them to be saved and, and, to be, and to go to heaven. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They're very zealous. They have a lot of passion towards the things of God, but they're not knowledgeable. And, and this is what a lot of Christians are like. They have a zeal of God. They want to get involved in church. They want to live for God. But the question is, are you saved? Because if you're trusting what you're doing for God, your church attendance, your baptism, your commitment to Jesus Christ, you know, your turning from your sin and your keeping of the commandments, and you're trusting that to get you saved, you're not saved. You need to put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to make sure that you have a zeal of God according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, so they, are, they don't understand how God makes us righteous, 
They being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, which is their works, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So what does it mean to submit yourself to the righteousness of God in order to be saved? It doesn't mean that you submit to his commandments and you do works, because that would contradict everything that we just read and everything that we just went through. It defines it itself in verse 3, having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That's how you obey the gospel. That's how you submit yourself to the righteousness of God. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So very clear that, that salvation is by faith through, uh, by grace through faith and not by uh, works through the law. 